going to be behind the camera today because I have been receiving many, many requests for a tutorial on my continental tent stitch parking technique. And uh, in particular, recently, Teresa Little Stitcher, hi Teresa, um, she wanted to see this because she was in desperate need of some help. So I have set up this very awkward looking um, set up today. So hopefully you can see everything okay. Um, I have chosen to show this tutorial using a, I think it's a seven count fabric. I was going to do it on my 28 count, which I'm currently using this technique on for my heaven and earth design. But I decided not to because it would be harder for you to see on this video. So I've chosen a very large hold fabric just to make this easier for you guys. I certainly don't recommend um, doing a continental tent stitch parking technique using this fabric because you'd need an awful lot of thread and it would be absolutely humongous. Um, I'm going to be using four strands of cotton using the loop method start to show you this technique. Now before I start I want to say a couple of things. One is that this is the way I do the continental tent stitch parking technique. Um, it's look I'm not even 100% sure that is the correct way but I have followed the diagrams that I found on the internet and I just decided to, you know, th there's a lack of videos out there on YouTube regarding this technique. So it's probably hence why everyone's been asking me to do one. So I'm going to show you my way, but please feel free to change it to suit your own needs. That's what stitching is all about, finding your own technique. And by us showing each other the way we do it, it may help someone out or it may you know, just be a light bulb moment for someone and I hope that's the case. So um, I've put up a photo in front here. This is the best image that I have found to date showing the direction of the tent stitch. The blue threads, the blue symbols on the top are the threads on the top of the fabric and they show which direction they go per line. So the top line which I'm going to call the odd line starts at the top right corner and works down to the bottom left corner and then works in a backwards direction. So stitch one, stitch two, stitch three, stitch four. The following line down is the complete opposite. It starts in the bottom left corner, works up to the top right corner and then works backwards again, stitch one, stitch two, stitch three. If you look carefully, you can see the purple strands there. That is the stitching on the back of the fabric. So it shows how the stitching should look on the back. Now, if you were to just do an ordinary tent stitch and not do it in these directions, your stitching on the back will be up and down, just straight lines, straight up and down. So the difference between these two is the continental tent stitch will actually the theory is it will pull your fabric back into shape because you're using both directions as you would for a cross stitch. Whereas a tent stitch, it's always going in one direction and therefore can distort your fabric. Also with the stitching at the back being in a slanted direction, it will help cover up the back of your fabric as well. So you don't have the holes or fabric showing through from the front. So let's get started. So I said I'm going to be using four strands of DMC with the loop method and I'm going to so just make note before I switch over to the chart this is the first row we're going to be doing row one which I will call the odd row and we're starting at the top right corner and working down to the bottom left corner and I'm going to show you this on my good reader this is a heaven and earth design free chart so there should be no problems in showing this because it's completely free to everybody. I've blanked out the first few rows because it generally takes me about half an hour to complete a hundred stitches doing this technique and I don't want to bore you by you watching me do all this so I've blanked out the first few rows and I've started 
I'm going to start doing it on these rows here so I can show you exactly what I'm doing. I'll just get this set up ready to highlight. Okay, so we're starting in the top. Sorry, loop method at the front. Starting the first row, which is a downward motion, top right to bottom left. So what I like to do is I complete my first my full row before I actually mark it off on my chart. So we have eight stitches in this direction. As you can see, we're working backwards. When I finish each colour, I'll try and remember to turn this over to show you what it looks like at the back. So that's six. Right, then we're going to skip a stitch because it's a different symbol and do the tenth one. I'll mark those off because they are now stitched. Now the next row is the opposite, starting in the bottom left corner and working up to the top right. So I work my, if you haven't seen my um, other parking tutorial video, I highly recommend you checking that out because I go into a little bit more detail on the parking technique. This is the same thing, but obviously using a different stitch. Um, so generally I work from the left over to the right per row and then I work downwards in a column. Now I'll go into a little bit more detail about columns um, with the continental parking a bit later. For now we'll just focus on this stitch. So we have a full row as you can see from the bottom to the top. And some of you may say okay so why would I want to be doing this instead of full crosses? For those of you that have done a heaven and earth designs, you will know that some of them can take years to complete. So this stitch um, basically will enable you to finish it in half the time because you're only doing half of the stitch. And that appeals to a lot of people, including me. Okay, another row done. Now, as I work between my rows, how I remember whether I'm on a downwards row or an upwards row is and this is completely up to you as to how you want to um, figure out a way of remembering it but I just say to myself I know I always start so the first row in my grid is always a downwards row for me because I like to start in the left and the left is always a downwards row so I say to myself down up down up down up and that's how I remember where to place my needle for my next stitch because sometimes as you know a symbol doesn't necessarily uh, appear on every single line you might actually stick um, you might actually skip three or four lines before seeing that symbol again so if that was the case I just say look at the chart and I say down up down up down up down and then I, I know that that particular row is a downwards or upwards motion so this is we're on the third row so it's down up down so I must um, while I'm doing this just apologize for my appearance of my hands I broke my thumbnail at work the other day and my left thumb I broke also and that one's far worse so it's covered in a band-aid so you don't have to look at it in its gory detail but I work in an industrial area so Broken nails are very common for me. I try to keep them at a reasonable length where they don't break, but my thumbnails always seem to break a lot. Okay, so that's another row done. Oops. Now on the last row, we're on an upward row. And this is the two-handed technique, by the way. A few people have asked to see that. So I have one hand at the bottom, which as I poke the top hand through with the needle, the bottom hand grabs the needle, pulls it through, and then guides the placement 
of the next hole. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but if you can get the hang of it, it does speed things up a lot. All right, so that row's finished. I'm going to park this thread here and I'm going to explain about where to park your threads for the Continental Tent Stitch once all my threads have been parked. Now that that's done, I'll turn this over so you can see the back. And as you can see, we'll go back to this picture. The back are all slanted, just like in the picture. Now, if you were just doing a normal tent stitch, the stitches would just be up and down. So this gives the back more coverage, more stability to the fabric, and it stops the holes and the fabric showing through from the front. So if your back looks like that, you're doing the continental tent stitch correct. Okay, so let's change colours. We're going to do the flower symbol now. Again, downward row is how I started. So down, up, down, so we have another down. And then the last row is upwards. So it's just remember downwards goes from left to right, upwards goes from right to left. So I usually, I keep a little notebook next to me when I'm doing this because I'm doing normal cross stitch three weeks a month and I'm doing this one week a month. So it's very easy to forget the, the direction of the stitches and which row. So I keep that as a little reminder. And I didn't highlight the other one before. So I should highlight that one, show where I have parked that thread. And if any of you have seen my other parking tutorial technique I go into a little bit more detail in that on how I park my threads and how to follow the symbols but this one is just purely really focusing on the continental tent stitch so the last row down up down up normally I don't have to tell myself that many times but because I'm talking to you guys it's easy to forget but once you get in a flow Okay, so let's have a look at the back. And that's how my back looks. As you can see, everything's slanted, except for this stitch, really, because we only did one. But that's all looking good. Messy, but good. Parking will not be neat at the back. That's um, not what it's intended for. Okay, so when it comes to my parked threads, I in my other parking technique tutorial, you heard me mention that your parked threads should always be parked in the starting position of your stitch, which for a lot of us is the bottom left hand corner. Some other people stitch um, the opposite way and that's totally fine. So you would actually have your parked thread in a different whole position. When it comes to parking with the continental tent stitch, being as you have a row that is stitched downwards and a row that's stitched upwards, if you were to park your threads in the starting position, you will come across areas where you have two threads parked in the same hole. Because um, for an example, if you had a parked thread for this one, which was going upwards and this one was going downwards, both those threads would be parked in that one hole and it would be very easy to get confused as to which thread was supposed to go in which direction. So the way I do it, and it may be completely different to everybody else, but this is the way I find easiest, 
is I park my threads exactly how I would do for any style of parking that I use. So for me, it's the bottom left hand corner. All my threads will get parked in that position no matter what. When I come across the row, and for instance, you can see already here in this first row, this is supposed to be a downward row. So these are already, all three of these are parked in the wrong position. So what I would do when it comes to that is I just pick up my strand thread it and then I just poke it back through the hole and bring it up where it's supposed to be and then I start my stitch and then I just go on and continue now if I decided to I could in fact just do that stitch exactly how I had parked it and then just continue on. I don't think one stitch would really make a lot of difference. So this is how it was parked to begin with. So I could just complete that stitch if I didn't want to take it out the hole and re-thread it and then just continue on. Obviously, the downside of that is you, you won't get the slant at the back. So instead, I have this one line coming across the back. But again, I don't think one stitch would make any difference. So whatever's easier for you, I think, would be fine. When it comes to finishing off my threads, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm quite happy to go down about two and a half grids to park my threads. I really don't carry them any more than that because I don't like to waste thread. If I choose to end my thread, I just do so simply by running it behind a few stitches at the back, about four or five stitches at the back, and then I cut it off. Now, something else I wanted to mention with this. In my dragon tutorial, I mentioned how I work in columns. I have been doing my heaven and earth design the same way using the continental parking, continental tent stitch parking technique. Gee, it's really long thing to say. Um, using that technique, I've been working along in columns as well, but I have noticed a ridge has formed at the edge of each column. And some of you have mentioned this and have questioned me about it when you're stitching large blocks of color about a line forming there. Now, I didn't really notice that on my blue dragon, probably because there wasn't really any large blocks of color. There was a lot of confetti in that stitch. But I have noticed it in my heaven and earth design. So to avoid that, the best thing to do is don't finish your column off in a straight line like I've done here. Feel free to stitch along further if need be. So I've noticed Quite a few people will do what I call a brick pattern. Let's change to the same color so you can understand what I'm talking about. So they might finish the rows off something like that or something like that because it creates that jagged edge and then it's not so noticeable. Of course, if you're a cross-country stitcher and you like to park cross-country, you can certainly do that. You can follow that, that colour all the way along if you prefer, if that's what's easier for you. I'm not sure how that will work with the placing of your um, stitch because if you have 20 stitches across going downwards in the next row... Your first stitch is over here you, you're going to have to carry your thread an awful long way over so again it's personal preference how you do it as to the amount of threads you should use to do tent stitch I get a lot of questions about that again that is personal preference it depends on the fabric count that you are using it depends on how you like the finished look to be. 
some people are quite happy seeing a bit of fabric showing through the back. Me personally, I like as full a coverage as possible. I don't want to see any fabric behind my stitches. It really annoys me, especially when I'm stitching black, if I can see some fabric showing through from the back. Um, but by using too many strands, it can be too bulky and can be very hard to do the parking technique and especially the tent stitch if it's too bulky. So my best advice is to do some test stitching on several counts of fabric using different amounts, different strands and see what you like. That's, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what everybody else does. It just matters what you like, what you enjoy doing, what looks the best for you. Because at the end of the day, it's your finished piece. And it would be awful not to complete something because you decide a couple of months down the track, I really don't like the coverage on that. Or I'm really not enjoying this because it's so hard to get the needle in the hole. You really, really have to be happy with how you're doing it. And I can't stress that enough. It doesn't matter how other people stitch it. By all means, take other people's advice and give it a go for yourself. But at the end of the day, it's how you are happy doing it that matters the most. So I think that's everything that uh, I needed to show you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll answer them as soon as possible. Also, if you already do the continental tent stitch parking or, um, or even just continental tent stitch and you'd be interested in doing a video to show others out there how you do it, please feel free to share. Um, I think the more people that share their techniques, the easier it is for the rest of us because sometimes it, it's just one of those light bulb moments that we see someone showing something slightly different and then it all makes sense for us and we can incorporate that into our own routine. Sometimes it doesn't have to be the entire technique but just one little way of counting something or or lining something up can make all the difference in making someone's stitching life a bit easier. So I'll leave it there for today. Um, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I have nearly 2,000. I cannot believe it. I'm going to have to organise a giveaway very soon. Um, thank you for everyone that likes and comments. Really, really appreciate it. And I love reading all your comments. So I will leave it there. And thank you all for watching. Take care and have a great stitching day. Bye for now.